In tonight's headlines, the Shenzhou 19, China's fourth manned spaceship, successfully docks with Tiangong Space Station and starts a new round of in-orbit crew handover with the Shenzhou 18 crew. In Hong Kong, the 61-year-old Choi Hong Estate will be redeveloped in three phases, starting 2028, and is expected to provide 9,200 flags upon completion. And at least 24 flights between Hong Kong and Taiwan are cancelled, as Super Typhoon Kong Ray is expected to be 500 kilometers from the city later this week. The Shenzhou-19 crewed spaceship carrying a three-astronauts crew has successfully docked with the orbiting space station approximately six and a half hours after launch. The crew, consisting of Commander Tai Shizhe, Song Lingdong, and China's only woman spaceflight engineer Wang Haozhe, met with the astronauts who have been residing on the Tiangong space station for the past six months around 1 p.m. The six astronauts will spend about five days together to facilitate an in-orbit exchange. After that, the Shenzhou 18 crew is slated to return to Earth on November the 4th. The spacecraft blasted off at 4.27 a.m. and successfully separated from the Long March 2F rocket about 10 minutes later, entering its designated orbit and marking a successful mission. Earlier around midnight before the launch, a send-off ceremony was held at the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. Commander Tai Shizhe, along with astronauts Song Lingdong and Wang Haozhe, received their mission orders. Despite the cold weather in Jiuquan, more than a thousand people were at the scene to bid farewell to the trial. Later on, the new Shenzhou 19 team will replace the previous Shenzhou 18 crew, remaining in space for six months to conduct a variety of scientific experiments and extravehicular activities. During their stay, they will also welcome the Tianzhou 8 cargo spacecraft and the Shenzhou 20 crewed spacecraft. The new Shenzhou 19 mission represents the fourth crewed flight in the application and development phase of the Tiangong Space Station and marks the 33rd mission overall in China's human spaceflight program. Jeremy Zhu, Cable News. Choi Hong Estate, a 61-year-old public housing estate and one of the city's tourist hotspots, is set to be redeveloped in three phases, spanning over 15 years and yield 1,800 more units than now upon completion. The first phase of redevelopment of the Instagram-famous estate in Wang Tai Sin will start in 2028, involving 2,023 units. Currently, the estate is the home of around 7,400 households. The affected residents living in Pik Hoi House, Ken Pik House and Ten Fong House will need to move out by 2028, allocating to the new Meitong Estate in the Sing District. The second phase involved four buildings near Longcheng Road, which is Kem Hong House, Pek Suit House, Hong Nok House and Ken Wen House, which will provide 4,100 units for affected residents in the third phase and reserve some land for the expansion of Longcheng Road. The final phase will include the remaining buildings, namely Choi King House, Kian Wah House, Luk Ching House and Chi Mei House, along with the car park. The third phase, from redevelopment to habitation, is expected to take place until 2049. All impacted residents will receive relocation allowances, and some can move to suitable renovated flats in other districts, apply for a housing subsidy to rent a private house, and have priority for flat selection in purchasing subsidized housing. As for the land earmarked for the primary school's redevelopment within the estate, it will now be repurposed for residential use. The government will allocate separate land for new school facilities. Regarding the two public secondary schools in the area with private treaty grants, the Education Bureau will continue to exchange with the school to reach a balance between the school's needs and the overall development of the Choi Hong Estate. Evelyn Bai, Cable News.
Lawmaker Kenneth Learn stated that many young people still aspire to home ownership and hope the government will introduce more supportive policies after recent measures to assist youth in purchasing subsidized sale housing. Talking to iCable News program Let's Talk, Learn welcomed the government's new initiative to increase young people's chances of securing home ownership scheme flats by providing an extra ballot number and reserving quotas for them. However, he urged the government to raise the income ceiling for applicants, allowing young people to aim for higher earnings. He also called for more mortgage and savings plans focused on subsidized housing. Regarding the new youth hostel project in Kowloon City, Learn believed it will significantly benefit young residents. He shared the story of a young hairdresser who previously lived in Ting Shui Wai but worked in Causeway Bay, facing long commutes. The new youth hostels greatly improved his work-life balance, allowing him extra time to enhance his professional skills. Furthermore, the government plans to transform the Kaitak area into a youth station with accommodation and cultural elements to enhance communication between local and overseas youth. Learn stressed the importance of creating engaging spaces that appeal to young people, inviting various operators to bid and harnessing community creativity. Additionally, the lawmaker said he hoped the YouthLink interactive platform at the Nam Chuan Community Center proposed by the government will help gather young people's insights for updating the next version of the youth development blueprint. Jeremy Zhu, Cable News. Parents in the city will soon be able to bring their newborn babies to obtain a one-time pass to the mainland on the spot at four designated border points. According to the chairman of the Democratic Alliance for the Betterment and Progress of Hong Kong, Gary Chan. Chen quoted China's Exit and Entry Administration by saying that parents would be able to bring their newborns along with necessary documents, including identity cards, birth certificates and guardians' identity cards, and apply for permits at the Luo Wu, Huanggang, Shiko and Shenzhen International Airport border point. This convenient measure is a response to parents who expressed urgency to return to the mainland with their newborns. Currently, it takes 10 to 14 days to obtain a temporary travel pass through China Travel Service Hong Kong. The DAB also expressed hopes that the application for newborn's travel pass could expand to Shenzhen Bayport and the Hong Kong Zhuhan Macau Bridge in the future. Some 70 cars were vandalized in two separate outdoor car parks in Fan Lane, and authorities are investigating whether the incidents are connected, suspecting triad involvement. Police received a report around 6.51 in the morning that numerous cars had been splashed with red paint at a car park on Chateaucock Road and confirmed that 61 vehicles were affected. Subsequently, reports emerged from a nearby car park on the same road where 12 additional vehicles had their windows smashed, raising suspicions of a potential link between the two incidents. The cases, which were listed as criminal damage incidents, were taken over by a regional anti-triage unit. Surveillance camera footage showed that two men entered the car park around midnight covering their faces with umbrellas to carry out the vandalism acts. Dozens of flights between Hong Kong and Taiwan have been cancelled as Super Typhoon Kong Rei is expected to make landfall in Taiwan tomorrow before edging closer to Hong Kong. The city's flag carrier Cathay Pacific said it has cancelled several flights tomorrow that were scheduled between Hong Kong and Kaohsiung and Taipei, but did not provide details. It added that further cancellations or delays were possible in the coming one to two days. HK Express cancelled 18 flights between Hong Kong and Taipei, Kaohsiung and Taichung on Thursday. Passengers can make full refunds or rebook without extra charges. Greater Bay Airlines cancelled two flights between Hong Kong and Taipei tomorrow. As for the Taiwanese EVA Air, it has cancelled four flights between Hong Kong and Taipei and Kaohsiung on Thursday. 
Kongrei is expected to make landfall tomorrow afternoon in Taichung as it barrels towards Taiwan. The island's weather agency has issued a land warning for two southern counties, which are expected to be hit by the storm's outer bands, with Hualien, Taichung and Pingchung to be most affected. Meanwhile, in Hong Kong, the powerful storm is expected to enter within 800 kilometers of the city tomorrow morning and maintain a distance of over 500 kilometers from the city in the next couple of days. China strongly disapproved of the tariffs imposed by the European Union on Chinese electric vehicles and has filed a complaint to the World Trade Organization after the bloc confirmed to increase tariffs on Chinese EVs to as high as 45.3 percent on Wednesday. After a one-year anti-subsidy investigation, Chinese-made electric vehicles were considered subsidized and hit the bloc's EV industry according to the EU's official journal on Tuesday. Therefore, the EU decided to increase tariffs ranging from 7.8 percent to 35.3 percent for five years, stacking on top of the original 10 percent standard import duty for cars to the EU, among which 35.3 percent was levied for SAIC, 18.8 percent for Gili, 17 percent for BYD, and 7.8 percent for Tesla Shanghai. A spokesperson from the Ministry of Commerce said China does not approve of or accept the European Commission's decision and the EU's anti-subsidy investigation is irrational. China has already appealed to the WTO's dispute settlement mechanism over the issue and will continue to take all necessary measures to safeguard the legitimate rights and interests of Chinese enterprises, the spokesperson added. As technical teams from both sides are engaged in a new phase of consultations, the spokesperson called on to reach a mutually acceptable solution to avoid an escalation of trade tensions. Evelyn Bai, Cable News. Eight Austrian soldiers from a United Nations peacekeeping force were injured when a rocket hit their headquarters in Nakora, Lebanon. The 10,000-strong force, known as the United Nations Interim Force in Lebanon, is deployed in southern Lebanon to monitor tensions along the border with Israel. The incident occurred around noon on Tuesday while the soldiers were engaged in repair work. According to Austria's defense ministry, none of the soldiers required urgent medical care, and it was unclear where the rocket came from. Defense Minister Claudia Tanner strongly condemned the attack and called for an immediate investigation. UNIFIL said the rocket that ignited a vehicle workshop was likely fired from the north, possibly by Hezbollah or an affiliated group, and confirmed that an investigation had been initiated.